Salve, and welcome back to 15 with Fosca, the podcast. On a sultry summer afternoon, I sat down in Manhattan with Amy Love Tomazzo to talk about the life of the great American photographer, Francesca Woodman, and her iconic work. What follows is the first part of the conversation that Amy and I had dedicated to truly locating Francesca's voice. Amy is writing a book on Francesca Woodman that strives to not only locate Francesca's voice, but to really understand her relationship with Italy. So stay right where you are, and thank you for continuing to listen. Buon ascolto e grazie mille. Buongiorno mondo, and welcome back to 15 with Fosca, the podcast. I am delighted to be chatting today with Amy Love Tommaso. Amy is extremely special for several reasons, which I'm about to share with you, but she's particularly important to me because she was, and she is, my very first client. In her first note to me, she said, I happened to see your recent post on my LinkedIn feed about leaving your Stanford and Florence position. I couldn't be more excited to see your post because I'm currently in the process of trying to find a way to spend a year or more in Italy to work on a book project. Needless to say, as a writer myself, I was intrigued. And now that I've been working with Amy for several months, I'm just as excited, if not more excited, about her project. I will let her tell you about it, but she is passionate about Italy and Italian and has longed to live in Italy for quite some time. And her book about the photographer, Francesca Woodman, is actually the reason why she came to me in the first place. So I'll let Amy talk all about her book project, but I would like to give um, a little bit of background information on her and also mention the fact that we're, we're meeting in person for the first time. So I'm actually a little nervous because I usually, up until now, I've either known my guests pretty well or at least I've like seen them in person once. So I'm, I'm very emotional because we're recording the podcast in her sibling's apartment in Hell's Kitchen <laughs> in New York. And we're actually in the shadow of a building that I used to work in. Um, some people out there might know that I used to work for the music business. I used to work for London Records and here in New York City in Worldwide Plaza. And so I'm actually looking at that right now. So a big shout out to my um, London Records former colleagues. Anyway, now back to Amy. <laughs> back to Amy Love Tomazzo. So Amy grew up in a large Italian-American family in central Connecticut. When Latin was cut from her high school's budget, she taught herself Italian at age 15, using her father's college textbook, and honed her speaking skills that year with the first of many visits to her relatives in Italy's Abruzzo region. On this formative trip to Italy, Amy fell in love with the piazza, the quintessential Italian public space, which led her to major in urban studies and minor in Italian at Stanford University. While studying urbanism and photography abroad in Rome her junior year, Amy was introduced to the work of the photographer Francesca Woodman, who, who would become a central research and writing subject. Amy went on to receive her MFA in creative writing from Hollins University in the beautiful Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia, where she continued researching and chronicling Woodman's life, um, her artistic contributions, and time in Italy. A lover of storytelling and community, Amy currently works for the Vermont Department of Housing and Community Development and works on her creative writing by night. In her free time, Amy is an avid triathlete, traveler, and Italophile. She plans to return to Italy to complete her book project about Francesca Woodman next year. So Amy, I'm so happy that we're here. I'm everyone I've already said I'm very nervous, but um, I'm really happy that we're finally meeting in person and talking about this project, which I oh, think is too. just phenomenal. Thank you so much. Grazie Fosca. <laughs> so happy to be here with you. And I'm so happy because I think the the first time we connected it was via Zoom and I remember mm -hmm. you're telling me about the project and I was like what are you what are you waiting for like this is your vocation this is a project mm -hmm. um this is the project of a lifetime mm -hmm. so obviously we're diving right in our listeners um who might I didn't know Francesca before mm -hmm. um you and I started to work together and um I think I we should just start out by talking about your first encounter with mm -hmm. Francesca when you were I mean a really young young woman mm -hmm. you were a young student in Rome um, studying um, Italian photography, et cetera. Why don't you tell us about that day that you discovered sure. Francesca? Yeah, that was a magical day. So exactly, I was in Rome. It was a Friday in March. <laughs> and my photography class went to 
a very special bookstore called Il Museo del Louvre um, to visit the proprietor, Giuseppe Cassetti. And we went there for the purpose of him telling us about Francesca Woodman, um, who was a photographer, lived from 1958 to 1981, spent a lot of time in Italy honing her craft, um, and she studied in Rome in the late 70s and knew Giuseppe then, so that's the key link. Um, and Francesca has become very, very famous um, after her death in 1981. And so we, my photography class went to visit Giuseppe so he could tell us her story because he is one of these um, like crucial keepers of memory, um, of her memory. So we went that day uh, and I was actually the only one in my class who spoke Italian and Giuseppe does not speak English. So he started telling us about Francesca and I was immediately just like drawn in and magnetized into this story. Like I felt like a vortex formed around me and I could only hear Giuseppe, like the only person in the world that wow. existed. Um, and he started to tell about how Francesca spoke Italian. She grew up visiting Italy. Her parents were artists. Um, and how when she studied in Rome, she had such a desire to really fit in to the Roman artistic milieu. And I felt so connected to her story. I felt these similarities with our bi biographies, with our Italian backgrounds. And the more he spoke, I just wanted to learn more. I was so fascinated um, and intrigued. And, I, and it was one of those pivotal moments mm -hmm. in life. And what, in addition to this beautiful and very poetic way you describe the moment as just sort of, I, I really imagined you there and I have chills, you know, in this mm -hmm. room and everything is gone except for the sound of Giuseppe's voice telling this story. But what was it also about her work that mm -hmm. spoke to you? What was it about those images? Yeah, so Francesca Woodman's work is very complex. It's at a super high artistic level where she's really a genius. I mean, her art is is compositionally perfect, I would say. Um, and yeah, it's full of juxtapositions. There's literal and, and metaphorical light and darkness. They are edgy, they're seductive, they're alluring, they're kind of secretive and also very playful. Mm. Um, and I saw that coming from the photos. I'd never seen, seen photography like this. There are many self-portraits. She often used herself as her model, often nude, mm -hmm. and um, she would use allegory and this sense of metamorphosis, found objects, and I was drawn into the photos, but I think because I, I had just been introduced to Francesca's work, like that morning, yeah. I saw her photos, and then I heard Giuseppe speaking of her, and I immediately sensed this contrast yeah. between the girl he was describing, who seemed very playful and fun and but very serious about her art and then these yeah. photos which are very mature mm -hmm. um and and I think again that word juxtaposition in her art in her story drew me in yeah. yeah and I think it's interesting that it was that juxtaposition that drew you in because when I started doing a minimal amount of research on mm -hmm. her to be able to have a decent conversation with you I realized that the things that are written about her mm -hmm. are kind of awful in a way <laughs> like they yeah. Just, they talk about her art, mm -hmm. and it's so elevated. I mean, mm -hmm. everyone is is definitely like, oh, Francesca Woodman was, you know, this, but it, this misunderstood genius. Mm -hmm. um, she, um, I'll let you talk about her death, but she's depicted as somebody who felt that she had failed as an art. This is what they say about her, what I've seen mm -hmm. about her, and I think that's contradictory, and also this disconnect that you have found in her mm -hmm. story. Um, but, like, she's depicted as this, you know, misunderstood genius um, who felt that she was not, she didn't gain the kind of fame that she should have gained by the time she was. And she was, like, 22, which mm -hmm. is, like, mind-blowing. Mm -hmm. But then also that she had had a, a delusione d'amore. I'm going to use the Italian, mm -hmm. but, you know, she, she basically, mm -hmm. you know, was heartbroken, right? Some right. romantic right. delusion that she had had. Mm -hmm. So can you talk more about that? What I see as sort of, I say it as, actually injustice, I think. Mm -hmm. And I think justice does need to, need to be served with Francesca Woodman and her story, which is why I think I'm like, Amy, you have to go write this story <laughs> because it's so important that people know about her because I think there is this contradictory right. um, description of her mm -hmm. that doesn't do her justice. So exactly. talk about that. So 
exactly. What I'm seeking is Francesca Woodman's voice. So to fill in some more of the biography, um, Francesca was extremely precocious as an artist, um, but she did commit suicide when she was 22, here in New York, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and so that biographical event has cast a shadow, for sure, over her, her corpus, her body of work, but also the interpretations of her work. And I even have this quote from Slate Magazine, they call her, or they ask, is Francesca Woodman the Sylvia Plath of photography? And that kind of narrative looms large over her work, um, and you know, she's kind of a casualty in many ways of the art criticism world and yeah. art theory, which both, you know, take an extremely academic, this sort of rational approach to analyzing every little bit of her, yeah. her photos and then through the lens of this kind of tortured genius narrative. Mm -hmm. um, and the, for me, why I'm seeking her voice is because I don't see that in mm -hmm. everything that's been written about her. Um, and I've heard these different stories about her from people who knew Francesca in Rome uh, when she was, you know, deeply immersed in the artistic world there. They called her sunny. Right. Playful. Yeah. You know, yes, this this very serious artist um, okay. who took her work, you know, at an extremely high, ambitious level, but who, um, you know, was also apt to just go to the thrift store and, and find the most whimsical outfit and skip through the streets and find art everywhere. And, and so w what I'm after is who was she? Yeah. You know, aside from the, the monographs mm -hmm. and the art, his, you know, criticism books, who was Francesca as a person? Who is the woman behind the photographs? Yeah. Why did she make the art she made? What motivated her? Mm. You know, it's it's the personal that I'm after. And I think it is an injustice mm. to have so much written about her. Right. That's not what I feel is the truth of who she is, who she was. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, it's a deeply motivating question for me. No, absolutely. Yeah. And I think that it was so touching to me the first time we spoke about Francesca and the project mm -hmm. and I had this, we had both had this sense of urgency. I remember speaking mm -hmm. to you and talking about Giuseppe and the fact mm -hmm. that, you know, Giuseppe is really your link to mm -hmm. her, to her voice. And That's he's the great. one person who can link you to that. And I remember you're telling me, um, that when he would describe Francesca, mm -hmm. he would use the, the word solare. And mm -hmm. for those out there who, who don't speak Italian, Amy translated it perfectly. It's sunny. Mm -hmm. um, it literally means like the sun. It means solar, solare. It's a beautiful word. But when mm -hmm. you speak in Italian of somebody being solare, they're just, it's, it's such a wonderful, it just means they just have a beautiful personality, right? So it doesn't, there's that disconnect between the way the, you know, her art now is only viewed mm -hmm. through the lens of her suicide. Right. And so I want to go back mm -hmm. to that in a, just for a second. Yeah. And also the fact that where New York feels um, even more poignant. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I think I'm happy that you and I are meeting here mm -hmm. because maybe in our way we're paying you know, tribute to her memory or whatever we tried to get into for our listeners. If anyone out there has any connections, we we're trying to get into visit the Woodman <laughs> Foundation um, because this is a story mm -hmm. that I really feel needs to be told. And I want to ask you mm -hmm. just a question that I believe we talked about this also um, during mm -hmm. one of our previous conversations. But, you know, now knowing what we do about sort of mental mm -hmm. illness and fragilities and things mm -hmm. like that, have you thought about... Um, that disconnect being potentially explained by the fact that maybe she was, you know, mm -hmm. we can't say, you know, with today's, obviously mm -hmm. we have today's terms or today's diagnoses, so we could say, oh, maybe she was bipolar or something. Right, right. Is that something that you, I mean, have you thought about that? Is that something that you think may, may have been the case she was mm -hmm. misdiagnosed or miss, I mean, how much do you know right. about her mental health? Right. Mm. Um, yes, it is a tribute. I feel, to be in New York, yeah. um, to her memory. And what I know are the first-hand accounts I've heard. Mm -hmm. That's what I hold most dear, aside from, of course, all the research anyone could do sure. online or in books. And, of course, there are 
anecdotes that describe the various ups and downs um, that Francesca experienced. Um, and sure, maybe it's a, a bipolar. Um, but to me, I see her struggle as really also inherent in a young artist trying to make it in a very cutthroat commercial yeah. world. Mm -hmm. This is a perennial struggle. Yeah. Um, I think she uh, succumbed to that ultimately as well. You know, to be an artist takes so much grit yeah. and determination, patience. Um, and I feel that um, that's part of the story that I want to tell mm -hmm. as well, um, is that what it takes to be an artist to balance the light and the dark and it's amazing to do that through the lens of photography as well which is literally the medium of light and dark mm -hmm. of stillness and movement and feeling trapped and free at once mm -hmm. um, I do have a, um, a quote that kind of haunts me a little from one of Francesca's friends mm. about her death and it says things had been bad there had been therapy things had gotten better guard had been let down and I think in that it's important to remember any, you know, mental health, depression, it's not rational or predictable. Sure. Um, you maybe can't pinpoint that, you know, it was a relationship or it was a show that didn't get sure. picked up mm -hmm. or something. Um, it's, it's that combination, the pressure. Francesca was really ambitious. Like she mm -hmm. wanted to, to be known. And frankly, she was right because she was a great photographer. Mm -hmm. um, she, and she was very young um, as well. And so I am interested in exploring those nuances of her biography, but not from this, not leading from that place. Okay. Right. So sort of is somehow weaving. I mean, that's mm -hmm. just almost inevitable. It's all in there no matter what, but mm -hmm. you're just trying to locate her voice and she deserves that. I think, mm -hmm. you know, she's been called sort of, I think she would, I don't know, people refer to her as like the, one of the, I mean, she's one of the greatest photographers of all mm -hmm. time, but people speak specifically about people like Nan Golding, you right. know, looking to her work right. as, you know, that's it. She's the greatest photographer, mm -hmm. period. And so she gave a lot of people inspiration. I think she would like that. I think that's the kind of recognition right. that maybe she would have liked. Mm -hmm. um, I think also growing up in that kind of pressure cooker environment. That, I mean, her family was it was right. a family of artists. Everyone, was, everyone an artist. was an artist, and everyone was like it was like I don't know, growing up in Renaissance Florence mm -hmm. or something, right? Like mm -hmm. everyone around her was brilliant, mm -hmm. and so maybe that was it too. Um, mm -hmm. A big part of it was also probably being a woman at that time, a woman mm -hmm. artist. We all know that that's still not easy, you know. Yes, it's it's totally true, and um, for her better or for worse you know, like the feminist art criticism movement really emerged in the 80s um, after Francesca mm -hmm. had um, already died. And so that both catapulted her onto more of like a global yeah. scene. It, I think the first um, public museum show of Francesca's work, Solo, was 1985. And so um, that was accompanied by, you know, a long feminist lens critique of her work and both contributed to her fame from that point on mm -hmm. but I think also again um is that delicate balance between interpreting her work through like a very narrow lens mm -hmm. of especially you know the subjectivity and objectivity of a female artist doing self-portraiture right um but perhaps also confines it to to a, a narrow reading yeah of her work um so uh, yeah to me you know each photo and this is what I really focus on is like um using each photo as a guide into okay. who she was where mm -hmm. she was at that time and what were her influences okay. passions and it's like the photos are the blueprint for me mm -hmm. yeah. and so why does this book need to be written in Italy mm. that's an amazing question um, <laughs> and really what we connected on first right? um so yeah. Francesca, even though she had an Italian name, she wasn't Italian herself, but um, as we've mentioned, both her, her parents were artists, really acclaimed artists mm -hmm. also, um, who loved Italy. And so they had a farmhouse in Antella, which mm -hmm. is near Florence. Francesca spent almost every summer there growing up. She even spent second grade in Italy. Ah, so that's why she that. spoke Italian so okay. well. 
they were regulars at the Venice Biennale, mm-hmm. um, all everywhere. And then Francesca, as I mentioned, studied in Rome through RISD, where she went to college. Um, so at RISD's European Honors Program in Rome from 78 to 79. And I would say that year in Rome, in addition to her childhood there, but that year in Rome was extremely formative, maybe the most formative time of Francesca's life artistically. And that's because she did immerse herself Mm -hmm. um, with artists and intellectuals and radicals. And the 70s in Italy were also very intense, the years of lead. And there's a whole political history that I, you know, is, is a huge part of this. And so the the artists she was with were, were anarchists. They were making very political yeah, art. Yeah, it was a really crazy time for Italy, it for the world. But, time. I mean, for Italy, it was a really right. big moment. Right, exactly. And so, you know, that was, it was um, an intense world mm-hmm. in which she entered. Um, and those were her, you know, her her comrades, yeah. really, in art. And they saw art as, as yeah, arms in some ways. That's right. And so um, that, so... Right, that year for Francesca um, was formative, but also she had her first um, exhibit, public exhibit at that time. So that was at um, Giuseppe's bookstore, mm-hmm. the Mal d'Aurore, it was called, um, right next to Piazza Navona. And she saw her first, you know, successes. She made these deep, deep friendships. Um, and so Italy, for me, is part of the guide, the key. I want to interpret Francesca's life through her time in Italy. Mm-hmm. And those are the people who knew her um, at this kind of glorious, uh, difficult, complex time mm-hmm. of her life. Grazie mille to Amy Tommaso for this absolutely illuminating conversation on the life and the work of Francesca Woodman. I look forward very much to the second part, and I hope you'll all join us. Thanks again for tuning in, and à la prossima volta.